啊，愿大家平安。May peace be with everyone。我们最近在啊查考，啊在读经的进度有提到，呃，传道书。Our Bible reading progress is in the book of Ecclesiastes。啊，传道书是智慧书信里面的一卷。And the book of Ecclesiastes is one of the wisdom books。啊，神造人，给我们一本手册。Created humans, he made a manual for humans. 让我们知道人是什么。So that we may recognize who we truly are. 啊，人活着要做什么 ？What is the purpose of our life? 啊，人生有问题要怎么解决 ？And how do we solve the problems that we face in our lives? 那这本手册就是圣经。And this manual is the Bible itself. 那圣经又叫做神的话。And the Bible is also called the Word of God. 那神的话就是智慧的来源。And the word of God is the source of all wisdom. So, a person needs to live their lives. And how can a person live their days? Ah, most important is to recognize God's word. They have to recognize and come to know the word of God. Use God's word to guide our lives. They will use the word of God as a guide to our lives. This is wisdom. Okay, let's look at the first chapter of the Bible. Let's look at the first chapter of the Bible. Let's look at the first chapter of the Bible. Let's look at the first chapter of the Bible. Let's look at the first chapter of the Bible. 第一章的第二节 ，verse two， 第一节跟第二节 ，verse one and two， the words of the preacher， the son of David， king in Jerusalem， verse two， vanity of vanities， says the preacher， vanity of vanities， all is vanity。啊，这个地方讲大卫的儿子，传道者的言语。Here speaks about the words of the preacher， the son of David， king in Jerusalem。大卫的儿子就是所罗门。The son of King David is King Solomon. Ah, so the Bible is written by King Solomon. Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible is written by King Solomon? Ah, why does the Bible say that the Bible 而且，传道书本身是讲所罗门个人的人生经验。It also describes the life journey of Solomon. 啊，所以他写的理论是他本身经历过的。And what he has written is something he has experienced personally. 所以所罗门知道他在讲什么。And so King Solomon knew what he was talking about. 因为他在生命中有这样的体会。Because he has experienced all these things he wrote about. 啊，那传道书的第一章第二节对人生的结论。And the conclusion of Solomon is written in verse two. 就是一切都是虚空。That everything is vanity. 他先讲结论。He first speaks of the conclusion. 哦，结论讲出来，然后再一步一步来解释为什么是虚空的。And then after he has stated his thesis, then he supports it with all the um individual examples. 哦，所以传道书第一章一直到十一章。And so, from Ecclesiastes chapter one to eleven, 就是要拆毁人的旧观念。It is to destroy and uproot all of our old beliefs. 什么是旧观念 ？And what is our old beliefs? 没有神，我也可以活得很好。The common belief we have in this world that we don't need God to live our life. 没有神，我的人生也可以活得很有意义、很满足、很有价值。And without God, I can still live a very meaningful, successful, and valuable life. 如果这个观念没有拆掉 ，if we do not destroy and uproot these old beliefs， 新的观念没有办法建立 ，then a new concepts of God cannot enter our hearts。如果新的观念没有办法建立 ，if our new concepts cannot be constructed in our heart， 我们的生活不会改变 ，then our lives will not be transformed。哎，因为生活是从观念衍生出来的 ，because life comes from the issues of a heart。所以很多人信耶稣，生活改变了。And so many people have their lives changed after they believe in Jesus Christ。因为他的观念改变。Because their concept and value has changed。但是也有很多人信耶稣，他的生活没有改变。But many people have never changed even after they have converted to Christianity。因为他的观念没有改变。Because their value system has not been transformed。那这里，所罗门说，一切都是虚空。And here Solomon states that all is vanity. Oh, 这个好像一个棒子把我们一打就醒过来。And this is like a baton that strikes us so that we wake up. Oh, 如果没有神 ，If without God， 你做什么都是空的。Everything we pursue in this life is vanity. 什么是空 ？What does it mean to have vanity? 空就是零。It means zero. Ah, 一生的努力到最后是归零。All the labors and toils accumulate to nothing. 空就是没有价值。Nothing means no value. 空就是没有意义
It means that there is no meaning to everything we do. Without God, no matter how we consider how great our lives are, no matter how much other people admire our lives, even if we were to be like Solomon, to enjoy all the splendor and majesty in our lives, but at the very end, we will only experience emptiness. And this vanity is zero. And after we have uh, taken out this old belief, then we can rebuild a new belief. And what is the new belief? And that is stated in chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. Here it says the conclusion of the whole matter is to fear God and to keep his commandments. Fear God not only includes knowing that God is present, and not only that we agree in theory in our hearts that, yes, there is a God existing in this world. And fear God means from the bottommost part of our hearts, we respect Him, revere Him. So in the first verse, we have to say, and so it says here that we need to take the time while we're still young to remember our Creator. That means that we need to put God first in everything in our lives. To honor that He is our Lord and Master. So that in front of God, we are accountable to Him. So that in front of God, we are accountable to Him. And this is the most important. If we say remember, that means one day we'll also many times forget about our Creator. Our life is going smoothly and in prosperity. We tend to forget that there is an eternal presence in this universe. We think that we can pass our lives without God. And so we have replaced God's position in our hearts. And we are our own gods. Then everything that we do in this life is in vain. And following, Solomon explains what does it mean to have vanity in this life. And he further explains how we can transcend the life of vanity. If we only talk about vanity, then this is too pessimistic. But we speak of vanity in order to have a more positive life. And that is to how we can build a life that is revering God. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 3, and verse 4. Verse 3, what profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. Verse 3 says, what profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? Verse 4, and it responds to this inquiry. That one generation passes away, another generation comes, and the earth abides forever. In the past, our forefathers were an agricultural nation. When the first generation was plowing their fields, and they passed away. The second generation takes on the toiling labor, plowing the field. And then that passes too. Generation after generation, they are working in the same field. And the passing generation is forgotten forever. 
This teaches us that this um, work on this earth. What meaning does it have for us? And what is the purpose of us toiling and working this life? We need to first ponder this question. Work from the time we're 25 years old to 60 years old. We worked 40 years. That is the time, the prime time of a person's life. The beginning period of life is a preparation stage. The ending stage of our life is a retirement stage. But the middle years are golden years. And for us to spend these golden years on labor, and toil, what is the point of all this? In this society today, we measure a person's success by how much salary he has earned. If he's very capable, he will achieve a high salary. And so these 40 years, we have uh, sold it into the company. And maybe uh, the salary is 100,000 a year. And 40 years is $4 million. And so these 40 years, what is the value to us? $4 million. But all this value is passing away. Then what is the purpose that this has meaning for us? If a person cannot find a job when he is 20-some years old, we need to pray for him. Because without work, he cannot have income. Without income, he has no future. And so a 20-some-year-old person will have great pressure if he cannot find work. But if a person who is 70 years old still has to labor and toil, then we have to pray for him too. It is very pitiful for a man of 70-year age to have to continue to labor. Because why should he still have to labor after all these years? And so we know a person survives not only for work. Because those who are elderly no longer need to work. The first purpose that we work is to accumulate wealth. Uh, the purpose of wealth is to sustain our lives. And so the Bible says that what we need in our daily lives, God will surely provide. And this doesn't mean bread will fall down from heaven. It means that He'll provide us the work necessary to fulfill our sustenance. We have a stable income. So we have no difficulty. Uh, whatsoever. That is the first reason that we work. And after a period of time, we no longer we feel contented and satisfied with our status quo. Then the purpose we continue to work is for a sense of security. And I heard this young man mention that unless he accumulates a million dollars, he would not feel satisfied or secure. And so many people are pursuing for this retirement that they can feel safe and secure at the age. And Many people have savings in the bank, so they have the sense of security that when they lose their jobs, they would have comfort. 
很thoroughly. The third purpose of working is probably for fame. So we often see that We know that many times there are rankings of who are the most richest people in the world, who is more successful. And so the purpose of work is to have fame. And that is also another reason. And sometimes some people work, secondly, because they want to feel a sense of satisfaction. They feel that they are useful. And so some people, after reaching retirement, they'll continue to work. Because not that they lack money. Because they do not know what they're going to do with their lives if they are not working. So in the beginning three months of retirement, they may feel it's very happy. Because they no longer have any responsibilities. It's relaxing time. But then after three months, maybe they'll wander around and try to find a purpose for the rest of their lives. Because if they don't have work, what is the point of living? And some people will go and take care of their grandchildren. And if you don't have grandkids, what do you do? And some people will try to find another challenging job to fulfill their lives. And these would be the two main reasons that we would continue to work. But these two purposes, again, is, comes to nothing when we are about to leave this world. No matter how what greatest sense of satisfaction we have in our lives, it will come to emptiness. No matter how much wealth we've accumulated, they would all be forgotten. In this history of the human um, universe, we would have nothing. We would be remember no more. 那到底我们用什么态度来面对工作, 啊, so what kind of proper attitude should we have to our work so we can transcend the vanity of life? 啊, 第一点, Firstly, 啊, we must uh, link everything we do in our work to God. 啊, 请看哥罗西书, Let's look at Colossians. 啊, 哥罗西书的第三章, chapter 3. Verse 22. Verse 23. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters, according for you serve the Lord Christ. Here states, Verse 23 says, Whatever we do in this society for work, we do it hardly as to the Lord and not to man. Verse 24, Because we will receive that a, a reward of inheritance from the Lord for what we do. And following it says that you serve the Lord Christ. Many times our interpretation of serving God is very narrow. And thinking that it is only working at church, but here definition broadens it greatly. Serving God could also mean if we serve God in our workplace. So that the name of God is glorified in us. Then this work that we do will also receive its required reward. 
这是超越虚空的一个方法 From God And this is a way to transcend the vanity of work 所以我们在工作场合好像世俗的工作如果为着是荣耀神用这种心态好像在服侍神天上也会有赏赐 So if we are to approach our mundane work in this world with the purpose to glorify God in our workplace then this is valuable in God's sight 圣经里面记载约瑟 The Bible records when Joseph was in the household of Potiphar. Potiphar看到约瑟到他家以后，凡事顺利。Everything that Joseph did prospered when he was in the household of Potiphar. So Potiphar把所有的事情都交给约瑟了。And Potiphar trusted Joseph so much that he entrusted everything to him. So we in the church often see brothers and sisters in the company. And we also know that there are many brothers and sisters in our church who has glorified God in their workplace, so that their bosses really trust them. And there's even employers who says, "Do you have any other workers from your church that we can hire that are just like you?" Because from the heart, as a person to do, such a person does not need someone to lead. Because if a person can serve their boss as if they're serving God, then no one needs to be watching over them. Their fear of God shall be the principle of their work. And this type of work ethic shall glorify God's name. And so this type of person will be welcome anywhere he works. And this person also brings the glory of God wherever he goes. And this person can also receive his just reward from God for his work. So here it says not only to be working for eye service as men pleasers. And because this is what a common people would usually have as an attitude. But in sincerity of heart, fearing God, we serve our masters. This is the first principle. That we need to treat all the work we do as an opportunity to glorify God's name. Secondly, we must link all the work we do in this world to the work of God. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 27. John 6, 27. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set His seal on Him. Here it says, "Don't do not labor for the food which perishes." Ah, this can be interpreted as just for the work of the world. This can also be interpreted as working only for the rewards in this world. Now, we need to labor for the food that endures to everlasting life. This is but instead, we need to labor for the food that endures to everlasting life. Something that our labor will inherit rewards in heaven. If we can link up our work in the secular world with the heavenly work above, then we shall have a reward in heaven. God has placed every one of us in different corners of this world for a particular purpose so that we can shine His light and preach His gospel of the kingdom anywhere we go. Many of our brothers and sisters have this a sense of mission. We have a sister who was teaching in a small city in the far away place. There was a sister who was teaching in a city in Canada. And every weekend, she would open the doors of her house. And she would invite the students to her house. 
Uh, she lives close to Canada, not in Canada. So every weekend, she would invite all the students of her campus uh, to come to her home. Uh, she would take them on errands to the supermarket for shopping. Uh, she would help them with their daily needs. Uh, because many of these students are uh, Studying abroad, and they need her help. Ah, After she has built up this relationship, she invited them to have Bible study in her home with them. And then she preached the gospel to them. So in and in this little town, she, uh, during her time that she was a professor there, oh. she actually uh, led more than five people to be converted in Christ. They were baptized. She could have just focused on her job as a professor. Oh. Uh, she understood her mission, why God placed her there as a professor. Oh. Oh. So in that remote town, uh, there were many people who got baptized. And then her work became very valuable, though she was working at a job in the university. And we also have members who are students in colleges. And they may take five to six years to finish their degree. And after five, six years in the college, they have led uh, maybe three households to come to believe in Christ. And because during Sabbath day, he would invite them to attend services with him. And slowly becoming their friends and relating with them. And after he graduated, there were uh, three households that were baptized because of him. And so when he went there as a student, he knew his mission was not just to be a student, but God placed him there for a purpose. We have a place in South America. There was a couple who was sent to reside there by their company. At that time, the couple felt very lonely without our church there. And so after a few years, they returned back to Taiwan. They didn't do anything there. But after the 1990s, the company also deployed them again there. But this time, they felt they had a sense of mission that we must preach the gospel there. So at that time, they brought many cassettes, sermon cassettes with them to to the workplace, and she would play the cassettes on Sabbath days. They would invite their co-workers and their friends to listen to the cassette sermons together. And miraculously, during that time, many people came, attended, and received the Holy Spirit. And they just listened to the cassette sermon, and when they kneeled down, they just received the Holy Spirit. And some people ask her, how is it that you can preach so easily? Is there any secret to your evangelism? She said on Friday, she would call all her friends. And after she called, she would pray, kneel down and pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. My work is now complete. It is your turn. And thank God, now there is a prayer house in her location. And so many people feel that wherever they've been placed, God has given them a responsibility. And so they are able to accomplish, fulfill this mission, and live a very meaningful life. Let's turn to Acts. 
十八章。Chapter eighteen. 啊，使徒行传的十八章。Acts chapter eighteen. 第二节。Verse two. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius has commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. And he came to them. Verse three. So, because he was one of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. For by occupation, they were tent makers. Ah, this place says, ah, there was a couple called Aquila and Priscilla. Here it states there is a couple named、uh, Priscilla and Aquila. 哦，那他们有工作，就是制造帐篷为业。They had a trade, and that was they were tent makers. 啊，这个只是他的工作。This was only their trade. 为着生活的需要啊的一个工作。For their daily living survival needs. 但是这一对夫妻，他真正的生活是为什么 ？But what is the true purpose for them to live? 啊，就是为着传福音。This couple was to serve God by preaching the gospel. So every weekend they would accompany Apostle Paul to go preach in the synagogues the gospel of the kingdom. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. So he was not only a tent maker, but he was also a tent maker. Now, a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in scriptures, came to Ephesus. This place says there is a man named Apollos. Here it states in verse 24, a certain Jew named Apollos. He was eloquent and mighty in scriptures. 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 He was eloquent and mighty in And they felt that this Apollos only was aware of the baptism of John the Baptist. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they took him into their home. Ah, so in verse twenty-six, they We know from here that Paul's purpose in mission life is to serve God. Oh, 那他能够把呃，亚百基拉跟亚基拉是服侍神。For Aquila and Priscilla was to serve God in their lives. 那他能够教导亚波罗。And for them to be able to instruct more accurately Paul's. 啊，这个表示他对道理的认识是很深入。That means that this couple had a very deep understanding of the gospel. 所以他可以用道理来帮助亚波罗。So they were able to use the truth to assist the ministry of Apollos. Ah, 成成为更好的工人 So Apollos can become a greater worker in God. 哦，今天我们有很多的工作可以做 Today we have many sacred works we can participate in. 在物质生活上，好像很多人都没有缺乏 Many of us are not lacking in our daily needs. 但是在属灵的生活上，我们发现很多人都需要帮助 But in spiritual lives, many of us are lacking. 那如果我们有属灵的装备 ，And today if we are equipped spiritually， 那、哦、愿意把家门打开来 ，And we're willing to open up the doors of our home， 我们可以用家庭啊来做很多啊教会啊所没有办法做到的事情。We can use our homes to serve God in many ways that cannot be accomplished in a church、哦。所以我们今天啊，我们需要的是更多这样的一种侍奉。So we need more Aquilas and Priscillas in the church today。啊，就是。啊，有工作，但是他生活的目的真的是为服侍神。Even though we are working, we are able to glorify and serve God in our mundane work. 啊，当我们在二十几岁的时候 ，When we are in our twenties， 啊，我们想的是什么 ？What do we think about？ 成就 ，is to have success。要那哪一个学校要毕业，要找什么工作 ？Which 
college we should go in and which career should we pursue. But when we are 50 years old, or maybe not even 50, we have already gained our experience in work and in society. And what are we thinking of now? We only think of meaningfulness. How can we live a more meaningful life? As we start to ponder in this direction, the daily work can no longer satisfy our hearts. We need to consider how can we live a more meaningful life in Christ. When we start thinking this way, we find that we can rearrange our time so we can serve God more. So we can become volunteers to serve God voluntarily in His church. So this is a transformation in our work. And this is a transformation in a concept of life after we have realized that um, this this world holds no meaning for us. And the earlier we can come to this realization, the better it'll be. And the more we have members with this type of realization, the more prosperous this church shall be. So how can we do so how can we transcend our daily lives through our work? Firstly, we must make it a point to glorify God in our workplace. Secondly, we must attach everything to service for God. Thirdly, we must be able to experience God through our daily labors. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. 2 Corinthians, chapter 1. Verse 12. For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and more abundantly toward you. Our boasting testimony of our conscience in this world is in simplicity and godly sincerity. Not fleshly wisdom. So many times we may encounter troubles at work. And during the times of our trouble, we can search out God. And while we are searching and pursuing after God, we experience His guidance. And that will help us to draw closer to God. And for example, when we're searching for a job, and we know to pursue God's blessings, so that in the process of searching for a job, our relationship with God grows closer. And there was a sister who graduated from a very reputable college. And, but during those four years, she only came to church three times. But later on, she could not find a job after she graduated. And she met one of our sisters from church. And the sister testified to her her personal experience in locating a job. Now you first must return to the church to seek after God. Seek first His kingdom righteousness and all your daily needs will be provided to you. And so this lost sister returned back to church to attend services. And she started to participate in the holy work at church. And one time this uh, sister uh, took another sister to go to the hospital to see a, a doctor. And, 
场所。And after、uh, taking her home, then she hurried to a job fair. 哦，那个时候已经快四点了。It was almost 4 p.m. 哦，所以人大概走光了。And most of the attendees had already left. 啊，他就那个秘书跟他讲，那你就把履历表放在这里就好了。So the secretary said, "Why don't you just leave your resume here?" 啊，他讲这个也没有希望了。And she thought to herself, "This is probably pointless." 啊，大概过了一个月。And but after a month, 他就收到一个电话。That she received a phone call. 就是有一个公司的主管打电话给她。A manager of a company was calling her. 他是最后要决定要不要请人的那一位。And it was the decision maker of the company. 啊，所以他已经跳过好几位了。And so she had already um reached the topmost level of management. 就决定决定要不要。要雇他。This person was deciding whether or not to hire her. 啊，那后来那个老板跟他问。一件事情。And the boss asked her this question. 我说你有没有读过一本书叫做《Purpose Driven Life》？有目的的人生。This boss asked him ask her a question. Have you ever read the Purpose Driven Life？ 啊，那后来两个就一起谈起信仰。And the two of them actually started talking about faith. 她就得到那一份工作。And that's how she landed her job. 啊，所以那个经验啊，让他的信心大大的增加。And that experience really boosted her faith in God. 工作是神赐的。That all work she recognized is from God. 只要我们跟神的关系好。As long as we have a close relationship with God. 哦，神一定会让我们有工作。God will surely bless us with our daily need. 因为先求神的国、神的义，日用的饮食就要给我们。Because if we seek first His kingdom and righteousness, then all our daily needs will be provided unto us. 所以要在工作荣耀神。And so we must make it a point to glorify God in our life. 工作跟服侍神连在一起。In our work and to serve God in our workplace. 在工作中来体验神。And to experience God in our daily work. 那我们就超越了虚空。So we can transcend this life of vanity. 啊，唱什么 ？Sing him. 三百二十二首。Sing him three twenty-two. 